welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the most iconic, memorable, and or important moments in live action films since the year 2000. Number 30, This is Sparta, 300. For anyone alive in 2006, you probably remember the hold that 300 had on pop culture. Gerard Butler's performance during this scene is one of the film's highlights. We must be diplomatic. And of course, Spartans have the reputation to consider. Choose your next words carefully, Leonidas. They may be your last as king. After being confronted by a Persian messenger, King Leonidas chooses to kick the man. This action plays out in super cool slow motion. Even more, Butler's scream captures the raw emotion and physicality of the Spartan spirit. Madness. This is Sparta! It's so dramatic and over the top that it's hard not to love on some level. In a movie full of crazy fights, this scene still feels like one of the standout moments. Number 29. Are you not entertained? Gladiator. This historical epic centers around Maximus Decimus Meridius, who is reduced from general to gladiator and finds himself fighting his way up the ranks of the arena. In this thrilling scene, he defeats an opponent and gives the crowd a piece of his mind. This prompts one of the best quotes from the movie. As the fighter unleashes his incredible speech, he shows that he's just as strong as he is well-spoken. Through the work of Russell Crowe, the hero comes alive in this compelling moment. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? You definitely don't want to mess with him after watching the scene. True to the narrative, this stands out as one of the most entertaining points of Maximus's journey. Number 28. Everything Bagel. Everything, everywhere, all at once. Despite all of its twists and turns, at its very core, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once is ultimately about family. This poignant moment perfectly sums up the wonder and intimacy of the movie. Yeah, yeah. When the everything bagel threatens to destroy everything, the hero chooses to save her daughter. The unexpected metaphor sets up an important piece of dialogue. By putting Evelyn and Joy together, the script manages to make sense of its complex plot. In this wonderful sequence, Stephanie Hsu and Michelle Yeoh sell this climax with their simple exchange, where the latter's character finally tells her daughter how she feels. No matter what. I still want to be here with you. I will always, always want to be here with you. It's a profound conversation that doesn't need any special effects to make an impact. Number 27. No. Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Stuck in captivity, Caesar finally decides that enough is enough. He stands defiant in the cell as guards come to move him. Tom Felton's character then tries to attack the ape, which, needless to say, turns out to be a huge mistake. What the hell do you think you're doing, huh? The animal fights back and sends out a powerful message to the fellow prisoners. As the spark that lights the revolution, this moment shows just how much the hero has changed. Take your stinking bar off me, you damn dirty ape! He's no longer afraid to confront his human captors or voice his dissent. In a film filled with memorable lines, this one is among the simplest and most resonant. Number 26. Gloria's Speech Barbie Amid its eye-popping set pieces and hilarious sequences, Barbie managed to send a clear message with this moment. The important monologue comes courtesy of America Ferreira's character Gloria. You are so beautiful so smart and it kills me that you don't think you're good enough like we have to always be extraordinary but somehow we're always doing it wrong in one of the best parts of the film gloria dissects the pitfalls of being a woman offering a heartfelt and inspirational look at the complexities of the modern world it's a stirring speech that struck a chord with many, and definitely played a huge role in getting Ferreira an Oscar nomination. I'm just so tired 
of watching myself and every single other woman tie herself into knots so that people will like us. Altogether, this monologue, embedded within the film's wacky plot, essentially serves as its mission statement. Number 25. No Man's Land. Wonder Woman. Coming face to face with the Western Front, Diana Prince decides to enter No Man's Land herself. This is not something you can cross. It's not possible. So what? So we do nothing? No, we, do, we are doing something. We are. We just... We can't save everyone in this war. This is not what we came here to do. This brave act comes with some stunning visuals. Wonder Woman deflects bullets and uses her shield, becoming a one-woman army. She inspires her allies to follow her into battle and push back their enemies. The heroic moment showcases the main character's supernatural abilities, along with her willingness to go the extra mile. Recreating World War I, the film puts audiences right in the heat of the battle. The visceral and imaginative sequence also gives fans a chance to see the heroine doing what she does best. You did this. We did. Number 24. Running Down the Burj Khalifa. Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. It wasn't his first stunt, but you could argue this moment took Tom Cruise's action career to the next level. It basically revolutionized the Mission Impossible franchise into stunt spectaculars. In the movie, Ethan Hunt has to scale the towering Burj Khalifa in Dubai. The entire scene is filled with exciting work from Cruise. This includes the shot of him running down the side of the tower, showing off with his fearless attitude. It's amazing that anybody would try something so dangerous and still look so cool doing it. That was not easy, but uh, I did it. What I miss. In one of his most spectacular feats ever, the actor proves that there's nothing he won't do to entertain us. Number 23, Obi-Wan versus Anakin, Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. At the end of the prequel trilogy, Anakin Skywalker fights Obi-Wan Kenobi on Mustafar. The lava planet sets the stage for a climactic battle between good and evil. Only a Sith deals in absolutes. I will do what I must. You will try. It all builds up to their final confrontation, filled with grief, hate, and love, all in one. Despite Kenobi's efforts to convince his former student to return to the light, Skywalker remains resolute. As Skywalker's disfigured body burns, the Jedi Master gives one final moving speech to the new Sith Lord. It was said that you would destroy the Sith, not join them! Bring balance to the Force, not leave it in darkness! Both characters find themselves at a low point in this equal parts exciting and heartbreaking sequence. The series hasn't always received universal praise, but this stands as one of its defining moments. Number 22, Shooting the Floorboards, Inglorious Bastards. At the beginning of this war epic, Colonel Hans Landa interrogates a French farmer. Plaisir de vous rencontrer, Monsieur Lapadite. Je suis le colonel SS Hans Landa. Que puis-je faire pour vous? J'espérais que vous m'inviteriez à entrer chez vous afin que nous puissions avoir une discussion. His evil charm led to the revelation that there's a Jewish family hiding underneath the floorboards. He then speaks in English to trick the victims, sending in his soldiers to create an impromptu firing squad. Director Quentin Tarantino has audiences on the edge of their seat until the big moment. Je prends the mix of sound, music, and cinematography give this haunting scene an unforgettable conclusion. This shocking turn of events not only sets up Shoshana's revenge plot, it also shapes the ensuing narrative. Number 21. Not Quite My Tempo. Whiplash. Few actors this century have proven more versatile than J.K. Simmons. In one movie, you might find him playing a caring father figure. In the next, he's a domineering tyrant. In Whiplash, we see Simmons naturally transition from understated to over the top in the blink of an eye. Simmons plays jazz instructor Terence Fletcher, who tries to get new drummer Andrew to match his tempo. Not, not quite my tempo. Fletcher seems patient and understanding until he chucks a chair at Andrew, which he narrowly dodges. Fletcher pulls no punches, or slaps for that matter, as he makes a college student cry. Fletcher's teaching methods are among the most brutal displays we've ever seen on film. Like Andrew, though, we can't look away from the cruel Fletcher. I'm upset. Louder! 
I'm upset. Louder! Number 20, is that everyone? Avengers Endgame. Is that everyone? What do you want it more? Remember when the original six Avengers assembled during the Battle of New York? The climax of Endgame took that iconic shot and multiplied it by infinity. As Cap prepares to go down swinging against Thanos, a series of portals open around the destroyed Avengers headquarters. Along with the Wakandan and Asgardian armies, Doctor Strange, Spider-Man, and several other recently resurrected heroes emerge to supply backup. Whether you were introduced to these characters through the MCU or were reading comics long before this cinematic universe existed, this team-up was beyond anything we ever imagined possible in film. Alan Silvestri's score adds to the gravitas, giving us all goosebumps. Few moments are more satisfying than when Cap finally says Avengers Assemble, leading this massive cast into battle. Avengers! Assemble. Number 19, coming back for everything, The Social Network. You don't get to 500 million friends without making a few enemies. That's one of the best taglines ever written, and we see exactly what it means in The Social Network, which opens with a savage breakup between Facebook creator Mark Zuckerberg and his girlfriend. What do you mean? I'm not dating anymore, I'm sorry. Is this a joke? No, it's not. Yet another bridge is burned during the film's boiling point when Eduardo Saverin confronts his former business partner. Learning that his Facebook ownership share has been diluted, Saverin drops Zuckerberg as a friend in the most poetic way possible, smashing his laptop. Yes. How about now? You still wired in? Call security. Although he's escorted out of the office, Saverin assures Zuckerberg that he'll be back for more than just his 30%. Andrew Garfield's powerhouse performance mixed with Aaron Sorkin's Oscar-winning dialogue amounts to an almost Shakespearean clash of tech titans. Number 18, you want to get nuts? American Psycho. You like Huey Lewis on the news? Uh, they're okay. Hip to be square is one of those songs that's so catchy that we don't always listen to the lyrics. Something similar can be said about Patrick Bateman, who lures people in with his charm and charisma. If people really listened to what he was saying, though, they could tell that he's a complete psychopath. By the time Paul Allen realizes this, Bateman has already broken out his axe and raincoat. Allen's cries for help are blocked out by the upbeat Huey Lewis in the News song, which is both horrifying and darkly hilarious. If we had to choose one image that epitomizes Bateman, it would be of him smoking a cigar with one half of his handsome face covered in blood. Number 17, Annie's Head. Hereditary. Hereditary undoubtedly has the most chilling ending of the century thus far, and it's inclined to maintain that title for the next 80 years. Director Ari Aster builds tension as Peter wanders through his dark house, but all bets are off once a possessed Annie emerges and chases him to the attic. <laughs> Bobby, Bobby, Annie repeatedly bangs her head on the ceiling, and if you think that's disturbing, wait until she breaks out the piano wire. The onlookers push Peter over the edge and out the window. Taken over by a bright light, he follows the beheaded Annie into a treehouse where Paymon's followers await. It's a finale that reduces the audience to jelly, uncertain what they just watched or if they'll ever be the same. Number 16, The Race Is On, Mad Max Fury Road. Mad Max Fury Road is essentially one high-octane set piece that only briefly stops for gas. Of course, it would be cheating if we put the nearly feature-length car chase on the list, so we're singling out the beginning as a Morton Joe and his army charges into the desert wasteland in pursuit of the Five Wives. In just a couple of minutes, director George Miller delivers more memorable shots than most movies give us their whole runtime. With Max chained to Nux's vehicle and a minion rocking out on his flamethrowing guitar, it's like every heavy metal album cover brought to life. The insanity is only cranked up as the drivers boldly venture into a hellish sandstorm without looking back. Such apocalyptic imagery has never been lovelier. I am the man who grabs the sun! Riding to Valhalla! Number 15, Trinity Test, Oppenheimer. The entire movie builds to this moment. In the New Mexico desert, the research team assembles to watch the first atomic bomb test. Three years, 4,000 people, two billion dollars. If it doesn't go off, we're both finished. Will it go off without a hitch or not? We know the answer going in, 
but we're still captivated by the results. Christopher Nolan takes his time inching us towards the climax for maximum effect. When it finally explodes, the resulting shot takes your breath away. It's a monumental event that's perfectly captured. The massive cloud doesn't disappoint, with the soundtrack cutting out to let audiences take in the impressive image. It's even more powerful to experience the explosion given its historical context. Number 14. You're a wizard, Harry. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. For anyone who grew up with J.K. Rowling's best-selling books, chances are you fantasized about receiving an acceptance letter from Hogwarts, whether it was delivered via Owl or the Keeper of Keys himself. The wizarding world may be fictional, unfortunately, but this scene made our dreams come true. A decade after bringing him to the Dursleys, Hagrid returns to young Harry Potter with a letter, a cake, and a major bombshell. We still get giddy when Hagrid says those four words that changed Harry's life, or our lives forever. You're a wizard, Harry. Opening Harry's eyes to a whole new world of wonder, this scene has defined childhood for many, and it will continue to do so for generations to come. It's the very definition of movie magic. Number 13. What's in the Basement? Parasite. Parasite is one of those films that constantly leaves the audience asking, where is this going? As the lower class Kim family cons their way into the wealthy Park family's lives, it would seem that all the pieces have fallen into place. Just when you think you have this movie figured out though, the Kims are paid a visit while basking in the Park's house. Who should they find at the door but Moon Guang? the old housekeeper who the Kims got fired. Moon Guang claims she left something behind, but it turns out to be someone, her husband who's been living in the underground bunker nobody else knew about. <laughs> A power struggle soon emerges between these two struggling families as an already insane situation spirals out of control. <laughs> <laughs> Number 12. The Final Words – Lost in Translation Lost in Translation is all about communication as two unlikely people find love and understanding in a foreign country. So what are you doing here? A uh, couple of things. Going through difficult periods in their respective lives, Bob and Charlotte discover that they speak the same language, both in a literal and deeper sense. So it's only fitting that the final words between these two are kept between them and nobody else, the audience included. While there's been much discussion about what Bob whispered into Charlotte's ear, this ending is better left ambiguous. All we need to know is that Bob and Charlotte have matured through their all too short lived relationship. The vacation may be over, but both will return to their lives feeling a little less lost. Parting is such sweet sorrow. Number 11. The Snap – Avengers Infinity War The climax of Endgame wouldn't have packed such a powerful punch if it hadn't been for the snap at the end of its predecessor. Not since Han Solo was frozen in carbonite has a cliffhanger to a major blockbuster left us more shocked. Where Han Solo was one character, however, Thanos wipes out half of the universe's population in one fell swoop. You should have gone for the head. This extends to Black Panther, Groot, and no, not Spidey. In the back of our heads, we knew that these fallen heroes would likely return somehow, but that didn't make watching them disintegrate any less devastating. Honestly, can you think of an ending that inspired more gasps or dropped jaws? Even with Endgame's happy resolution, this scene still shreds us to pieces. Number 10. Call It – No Country for Old Men The scariest characters can strike fear with even the simplest of gestures. A coin toss doesn't sound especially intense, but when the coin belongs to Anton Chigurh, it's the most frightening thing possible. After a gas station clerk asks Chigurh one too many questions, his fate boils down to heads or tails. Call it. Alfred Hitchcock firmly believed that when a bomb suddenly goes off in a movie, it's a surprise. When the audience knows that the bomb is there though, it's true suspense. Chigurh is a ticking time bomb and the clerk has no idea just how close he comes to detonating him. But we do. Well done. Don't put it in your pocket, sir. Don't put it in your pocket, it's your lucky water. 
Thankfully, the clerk chooses wisely and Shigure exits peacefully, leaving us to catch our breath. Number 9. Hello Stranger Moonlight Sharon. What's up, man? It's, uh, it's Kevin. Now an adult drug dealer, Chiron feels trapped in a life that he never wanted. Chiron has spent years hiding his true self from the rest of the world. During his youth, however, he opened himself up to Kevin, a friend and much more. When Chiron reunites with Kevin at a diner, neither is sure what to expect. Hey, man. How you doing tonight? How can I get you? Chiron? Chiron is especially confused as to why Kevin called him out of the blue. As it turns out, he was inspired after hearing the song Hello Stranger. Allowing the music to do all the talking, Kevin lets Chiron know what's in his heart. The song also speaks to Chiron on a nostalgic and romantic level, showing him that he doesn't need to go through life alone anymore. Number 8. Lemon Quaaludes – The Wolf of Wall Street Even with Jonah Hill in a supporting role, we didn't expect to laugh as hard as we did throughout The Wolf of Wall Street. The funniest sequence comes when the Lemon Quaaludes kick in, hindering Jordan Belfort's speech, body, and consciousness. Pow! I mean, I had skipped the tingle phase and went straight to the drool phase. Merely going down the stairs and opening the car door becomes an arduous journey for Belfort during the cerebral palsy phase, as he puts it. His troubles aren't over when he gets home, as Jordan needs to pry an intoxicated Donnie off the phone. The distraught Donnie nearly chokes on deli meat in the process, but Jordan snaps into action thanks to his own brand of spinach. A Lamborghini might have been destroyed, but it was worth it for this priceless bit of comedic gold. Number 7. The Pale Man – Pan's Labyrinth The designs for most modern movie monsters tread on familiar territory. There isn't another monster in cinema that looks quite like the Pale Man, however. What with his sagging skin, slender body, and unique eye placement. Even when completely frozen, he can overwhelm anyone with dread. Akin to the Garden of Eden, naive Ophelia goes against the fawn's warning and eats two grapes, waking the creature up. Sticking a pair of eyes in his palms, the pale man consumes two fairies. And if that wasn't enough nightmare fuel for one lifetime, he proceeds to pursue Ophelia, who barely escapes with her last inch of magic chalk. Everything about this scene, from the atmosphere to pacing and to production values, puts the dark in dark fantasy. Number 6. The Crazy 88 – Kill Bill Volume 1 You didn't think it was going to be that easy, did you? You know, for a second there? Yeah, I kind of did. Quentin Tarantino is frequently praised for his inventive use of dialogue, but his movies are driven just as much by visual storytelling. From a directorial standpoint, The Bride's showdown with the Crazy 88 just might be Tarantino's masterpiece. The choreography, the camera angles, the stunt work, the sound design, the unbelievable amount of bloodshed, it all builds to a tour de force of action. Tarantino pays homage to a variety of different styles and genres, ranging from martial arts to grindhouse. At the same time, the sequence is pure Tarantino, and no other director, living or dead, could conceivably bring it to the silver screen. In typical Tarantino fashion, the music selections are also oddly perfect for this bombastic setup. Number 5. The Sunken Place – Get Out How do you feel now? I can't move. You can't move. From the moment Chris arrives at his girlfriend's parents' house, something is clearly amiss. Matters go from unsettling to soul-crushing as Chris sits down to a hypnotherapy session with Missy. The family matriarch literally gets inside his head as she stirs her tea, which only grows more nerve-wracking as the scene plays out. Now, sink into the floor. Wait, 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 wait. Sink. Thinking of his late mother, Chris becomes paralyzed with fear, unable to wipe the tears flooding from his wide eyes. Missy submerges Chris into a dark limbo where nobody can hear his cries for help. Not only is this a harrowing image, but it ingeniously encompasses the film's themes of marginalization and the system that's been keeping people of color down. Jordan Peele gets all of this across through unforgettable visuals alone. Number 4. The Hallway Fight – Inception Inception stimulates the mind in more ways than one. The ending still has us lying awake at night, wondering if the top ever fell over. When the film isn't asking us philosophical questions, its technical wizardry is leaving us in total disbelief. 
This is a film where you're constantly asking, how did they do that? In the case of the spinning hallway fight, the answer surprisingly isn't CGI. Turning to practical effects, the filmmakers constructed a rotating set to make the Zero Gravity Showdown a reality. This masterclass of special effects, choreography, and cinematography accumulates to an image that will forever stick in your head. It just goes to show that if you can dream it, you can do it, at least on the silver screen. Mustn't be afraid to dream a little bigger, darling. Number three, The Battle of Helm's Deep, The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers. The Lord of the Rings sets a new gold standard for epic set pieces, and The Battle of Helm's Deep may be the most ambitious action sequence Peter Jackson ever pulled off. This is a textbook example of how to shoot a giant battle at night. Instead of shrouding the action in darkness, Helm's Deep is draped in atmospheric blue. The audience never has trouble making out the imagery, and this is definitely a battle where you want to see everything. The remarkable stunt work and sheer scale of the battle aside, it's our emotional investment that makes the sequence gripping. Gandalf manages to top his standoff against the Balrog from the first film as he rides in with reinforcements, ushering in a bright new day for our heroes. Number two, I drink your milkshake. There will be blood. Rain it. Rain it, Eli, you boy. After stripping Eli of his dignity and faith, Daniel Plainview reveals that he's also drained the land up for sale of its oil. Breaking down, Eli pleads with Daniel to have mercy. And how does the oil man respond? He makes fun of him like a schoolyard bully, boasting about how he slurped up Eli's milkshake. I drink your milkshake. I drink it up! Daniel isn't content with seeing Eli squirm. He paints his bowling alley red with Eli's head. This movie isn't called There Will Be Blood just because of its greed and capitalism themes. Daniel Day-Lewis's Oscar-winning performance, coupled with Paul Thomas Anderson's commanding dialogue, results in a finale that's haunting, darkly humorous, and completely bonkers. It's capped up with some of the most appropriate last lines in any motion picture. Mr. Daniel? I'm finished. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, the interrogation, The Dark Knight. You wanted me, here I am. Whatever the medium, Batman and the Joker's dynamic is the stuff of legend. This hero and villain are so well-defined that you just need to put them in a room together and see what happens, which is exactly what Christopher Nolan does here. With Harvey Dent missing, Batman interrogates the Joker, although it could be seen as the other way around. While they may be polar opposites on the surface, the Joker views Batman as his kindred spirit, two forces cut from the same cloth that can't exist without the other. The Joker's goal is to bring Batman down to his level. I have one rule. Oh, then that's the rule you'll have to break to know the truth. Which is? The only sensible way to live in this world is without rules. And tonight you're gonna break your one rule. While Batman doesn't break his one rule by taking Joker's life, his spirit is broken as this dark night turns to dawn. Did we forget another defining cinematic moment from this century? Let us know in the comments. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.